Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another week of our um, webinar series here. I'm Rachel Purdy with the Center for Farm Financial Management back again, and today I have Pauline Van Nerden joining me. Um, she is also an economist from our center, and today she will be going over FinPAC, which is our um, farm, which is our um, credit analysis um, financial planning software that the Center for Farm Financial Management has developed. So with that, I will let Pauline take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I uh, today plan to, like Rachel said, talk about FinPAC. I wanted to start with just um, some overview information. So I have a short PowerPoint and then I'll actually uh, just show you some of the tools I talk about in the software and, and some of the output. So you have a feel for that as you uh, work with farms or if you're a farmer yourself and looking to prepare some of these uh, financial reports. Uh, so let me share my screen with you. And um, so here, hopefully everybody's seeing, um, seeing my PowerPoint here. Uh, I'm just gonna move that off to the side. So uh, today we are going to talk about FinPAC as a piece of what we're talking about. And I would certainly encourage you to chat in questions or I know we're a fairly small group, so um, we can pause at times and uh, take questions out loud as well, um, if that's more conducive for, uh, for some of that. So certainly want to get you all the information you need though. Um, so like Rachel said, FinPAC is um, really the flagship program um, software of the Center for Farm Financial Management. It actually was developed in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Um, and it was developed as a planning and financial analysis tool uh, for farmers, uh, directly working with farmers in, in their um, financial management needs. We've, um, expanded that reach over time because lenders have gravitated to uh, this this software as well for their work uh, for credit analysis needs and and we've done some other expansions but we um, you know our goal really in the end is to help farmers with their farm financial management um, through the fintech software so uh, with that uh, again, um, in case this hasn't been shared, just thought it might be prudent to share our mission at the Center for Farm Financial Management. Um, and that is to improve the farm financial management and marketing abilities of agricultural producers and the professionals who serve them through educational software and training. So uh, like to share that just because we, our goal is that farm financial management piece and really helping farmers in the end improve uh, their uh, their financial analysis, their financial capabilities along the way. So with FinPAC, uh, we're able to answer three basic questions uh, with the software and the tools that we'll take a look at today. So the first, uh, the first one is, where am I? Uh, then, where do I want to be? And lastly, how can I get there? So uh, let's, let's take a look at what that means a little bit more. Um, the FinTech components that really help us with a lot of that work here are, are the following. So the FinAn, uh, as it's titled in the software, which is an annual financial analysis uh, evaluation. It's, it's preparing that income statement and doing a reflective look at the past year. Then we also have the planning tools, uh, the, the uh, how do I get there type of uh, planning. So that would be uh, FinLurb. Uh, is titled in the software, which is a long range planning tool, helping uh, a producer look at several different scenarios and which may be the most feasible for, um, for their operation and their future. And, and so that's usually a several year look at um, for future planning needs. We also offer more of a, a shorter or more immediate look at the near term, which is the fin flow or the, the cash flow planning tool where you can do an annual or monthly cash flow plan. So business objectives, uh, I think uh, resonate with, with any type of business or farm operation, no matter the size or scope. And that includes profitability. So having a positive return to labor management and owner's equity. Uh, having liquidity or having the ability to meet financial obligations as they come due. 
and um, solvency. Uh, lastly, being the relationship between uh, assets owned, debt, and then owner's equity. So within FinPAC um, or in general in financial analysis, the income statement uh, speaks to profitability. The cash flow statement uh, provides liquidity information and the balance sheet helps us determine solvency. And we'll take a look at all three of those uh, within FinPAC. Here, uh, I just like this schematic in a lot of ways because it helps for me pull things together in general. So how do all of these things fit together and connect? Uh, first of all, in order, you know, our starting point in FinPAC and, and oftentimes I'm sure for you in, in your work as a farmer or work with farmers is developing that balance sheet. So in, uh, in FinPAC, that balance sheet is a cornerstone uh, piece of information is, is what I like to title it. So having a beginning and ending balance sheet that bookend our, our year, our calendar year, our, our fiscal year, I should say, and then the farm records from that operation. We can then use that to do the FinAN or the year-end analysis. So a lot of that work is, of course, being compiled at, at this time. Uh, with that ending balance sheet just being recently completed for uh, you know, December 31st, January 1st. So that's the past performance review. And then FinPAC can also be used to help do that forward planning or that projection planning with the either FinLERB doing a, a long range multi-year plan or a more, um, a more current look at the coming year with the FinFlow or cash flow plan. We can also infuse bu budgets in here if we'd like in part of that process, and we'll, we'll talk about that just briefly as well. So just a, a quick overview on these tools. So FinAN, like I said, is that year-end financial analysis for a farming operation. There's really two components or, or three components, as you see on the screen here. The first is just a whole Make farm analysis, uh, looking at whole farm profitability, and a financial analysis uh, for the for last year for the most recent year. You know this this can be a full year's worth of information, or you certainly could do a quarterly or a semi-annual analysis if if desired. With that, not only do we get financial performance, but you can also do some pretty high-level production performance information as well. Then we can take that a step further, especially as um, as you have uh, more information, more detailed information. You can actually take that whole farm information and break it into the different enterprises within the operation. So taking a look at um, you know, uh, crop enterprises, so different crops being produced in the farm, you could do it as a whole um, at a, a large or a, a, a holistic level, all corn produced by the farm, or you could break that down into individual fields if you'd like. You can be as general or as specific there as you'd like. You can even take a look at, um, you know, livestock, of course, as well in that process. And we even have value added, um, I should have added that here, but value added analysis as well. So if you're doing something um, outside of um, the traditional corn or excuse me, crop or livestock type of production. As we do this over time then, um, these historical trends build on themselves, of course. So we can start to see trends in financial performance, trends in enterprise profitability. And really, I think that's, a, uh, you know, each year is important to analyze, but as we can look at the trends over time and look at how things evolve, I think that is, um, is quite helpful and uh, is helpful and useful as an operation as well. Okay, so why would we want to do such an analysis? Um, much of this I've already spoken about, but in general, looking at that track record of performance over time, it also helps uh, establish a discipline in accounting practices. So a lot of this work is being compiled for tax needs anyway, so let's take that tax analysis one step further and really dig into the financial performance as part of that. Also, uh, a lot of the farms that use FinPAC are, are using this information not only to inform themselves, but also inform their lenders or others that they may be collaborating with um, in their farming operation. And of course, in general, it's just to evaluate the overall performance, both production and financial performance of the business. 
So then um, moving on, um, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds here, but did want to talk slightly about cash flow planning as well. So what I just was talking about with the financial analysis, of course, was was reflective. We're looking back at the at the historical trends at the most recent year and looking at that financial performance that occurred. Of course, it's always important to look forward to. So with cash flow planning, we're moving from that that um, historical look or, or looking backwards to uh, instead looking forward and planning for the coming year. Like I said earlier, we can do that with a few different tools. Um, FinLurb, I'll, I'll offer first, and that is a, a long range plan where we're looking at a typical year or an average year into the future. So it's not as detailed as to exactly what am I producing in this coming year, but in general, what do I plan to produce? Uh, so I can help um, determine what is the right mix for my farm. Perhaps it's should I invest in this land purchase or additional acres to rent or should I add a livestock enterprise or a crop enterprise to my farm? So it's it's looking at that bigger picture look in general. Um, we can then use that typical year information for um, different alternatives to look at profitability, repayment ability, and net worth growth. And here, as you can see, we can have up to 15 different options in these plans. So you can look at a lot of different scenarios side by side to see exactly um, you know, what might prove uh, the best path for your uh, farming operation going forward or for those that you're working with. Then if you're wanting to do more of a what is this next year look like type of cash flow plan, which certainly is very typical and, and lots of farms are, are doing that work right now as they're planning for the coming year. Um, we do offer FinFlow then and FinPack as well for that need. And there are three ways that you can prepare a cash flow projection. You can do um, a higher level annual look, just looking at total annual inflows and outflows and and all of that, or you can get um, more specific and actually look at, you know, by enterprise using budgets or just a monthly look at that cash flow plan. So we can better see when um, we may have cash shortfalls, we may have surpluses, uh, what sort of operating needs are, are needed in general and, and how that changes on a month by month basis. So depending on probably the structure and the type of your operation, and um, certainly the need for operating credit will uh, probably help you determine which of those is, is best met for your operation or would provide most useful for your operation. So uh, this is a traditional cash flow plan. You can do a multi-year plan here as well if you would like. So I can take this year and I can project that into the future as well. You can see we can do that up uh, to um, up to 10 years in the future. And with this cash flow plan, um, not only do we get uh, information on the current year, but as a part of that, we will get a pro forma look at income statements and the ending balance sheets for the projection period as well. Um, so the annual projection very quickly is, is like I said, for uh, a quick annualized summary, probably less complex situations, is, uh, is where an annual projection might prove the most useful. Uh, a monthly projection, um, if you are working with tax information as your basis and, and that's easier to look at the whole number for the year, um, the monthly type of projection may prove most useful for you. Also, if you're not looking at changing enterprises, we, um, as it says here, we have a status quo plan for the coming year, meaning I'm going to be producing much the same um, commodities that I've produced in the past. Then the monthly projection uh, is a great tool, can help you get some more of that monthly detail related to, as it says here, operating, financing, and investing activities, um, and gives a little bit more detailed information uh, in the financial planning for the coming year. If you are looking at making some changes in production, so I'm looking to add acres, I'm looking to um, change enterprise mix of some sort, doing the monthly projection with budgets uh, may be best uh, for your use there. Not only does it give that monthly detail, but we can pivot more quickly with the budgets and, and do some additional planning. So 
um, you know, I can answer more questions about that, but just that becomes our most specific, most, most sophisticated look, I guess, at a cash flow projection. Um, just want to offer this as well on our um, website. So not only can you learn more about FinPAC at our Center for Farm Financial Management website, but we also have this knowledge base, which um, as you work with folks or if you are a producer using FinPAC, we have these input forms that can be quite useful as you especially begin working with somebody. And then also just some general knowledge based um, white papers that we have with some, like it says, um, explanation on some various topics. We have some tips and tricks in there. So uh, a great repository of information if, if you're looking to uh, get more details. Also, uh, we offer on-site training, of course, but um, uh, uh, several times a year, but we also do have online training. So just like to point that out as well, that you can access that at your own time as the need arises and you can dig into the different um, short video clips that are on all of these different topics in FinPAC. So with that, I will switch over to FinPAC. I do see there's um, one question here that I'll pause and answer that's been chatted in. So the question is what apps or track record do you recommend for financial decisions? Um, so FinPAC specifically is not an app. Um, it is an installed software at this time. Um, so I, I guess I'm not as familiar with apps that may do um, the same work that FinPAC is doing. Um, but certainly I would recommend FinPAC as, as a software solution for that. If part of your question relates to record keeping, um, we, can, we can offer a few ideas there, um, you know, QuickBooks, uh, Quicken are both popular generic software solutions, and there's some egg specific uh, financial record keeping solutions too, like PC Mars, um, uh, FarmWorks, there's uh, a few different ones. Uh, those are a couple that come to mind. So uh, Rodrigo says, yes, record keeping. So again, I'm not as familiar with apps related to record keeping. Specifically, there may be some that I'm just not aware of, but um, like I said, QuickBooks and Quicken are quite popular just because they are pretty universal. Uh, additionally, uh, like I say, I, I personally, and this is me speaking at the Center for Farm Financial Management, but I, um, I like PC Mars a lot, which is a farm specific software. There's uh, CenterPoint or Red Wing software as well, which would be egg specific. FarmWorks is egg specific. Um, and uh, there's uh, Easy Farm and, and some of those as well. So um, I can, as Rachel's talking about IFSAM, I can share a resource that um, in the chat that may link you to some record keeping systems. So, all right, so let me switch over to FinPAC instead here. So as I come into FinPAC and I'm already in a um, sample file that we have, but in general, um, a customer or farm's information, uh, producer you're working with, all of their information related to these different financial statements is housed in this single file. So here as we look at um, this navigation tree here on the left-hand side, we see balance sheets and then we see the FinAN and then the projections. So all of that detail is here within one single file. And as you can see, we can have a lot of history related to a farming operation as well. So um, I can have any number of balance sheets. I can have as many cash flow projections, whatever's needed uh, with that operation. Uh, I will say too, you notice that balance sheets specifically here are all year-end balance sheets. Certainly that's what I talked about in my overview here, the need for those year-end balance sheets. But if you needed to do a June 1st balance sheet or or different balance sheets throughout the year uh, as a, a check-in or for lending needs or something, that certainly is available. Um, you can do a balance sheet as, as often as needed uh, for your work. So I just wanted to um, pop into a balance sheet here and talk really briefly about it. Um, so in general, you can see our balance sheets are divided into current, intermediate, and long-term assets and liabilities. 
Uh, depending on your farming operation type, you can include personal assets and liabilities as well. So certainly sole proprietors likely would do that. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the output here. And uh, with FinPAC, you're all, always getting an executive summary uh, within um, the, the uh, financial statement you're preparing. So here we're getting a, a quick look at the balance sheets. Um, we're able to quickly surmise the current position, intermediate and long-term position for this operation. And uh, sorry to scroll here a little bit, but we'll get down to net worth, of course, always as well. So a quick snapshot of where that farm is, what their financial position is. Um, and then we had entered a lot of detail on this particular operation as well. So this is a dairy operation um, in my example. So you can see, um, actually, I think it's a beef cow calf. I'm sorry, I pulled up a different file. Uh, but you can see we had some prepaid, some crop inventory, some livestock inventory, all of that is there. And we can see that, um, that detail. Then lastly, uh, also provided in, in the balance sheet is the ratios related to the balance sheet specifically. So the snapshot in time, we can see our liquidity and solvency ratios for this operation. So once we've completed the balance sheet, we can then use that information again to build upon um, those other tools. So the uh, financial analysis here uh, has both whole farm and enterprise related information. So again, I'm not gonna dig into the nuts and bolts of entering this, but really we're working through the cash um, the cash um, in and out for the operation for the year. So you can see here capital transactions, financing um, transactions, our revenue and income or revenue and expense pieces for the last year as well. So once we've entered all that, uh, again, we will get an executive summary to the outputs. And um, I'll spend just a few moments, moments on this here. Um, the, the income statement for the past year is presented first here on the left-hand side. And um, you can see here, we are doing an accrual adjusted income statement. So you'll see cash sales listed and then inventory changes. So that um, is taking into account that the inventories from the beginning and ending balance sheet. So we get a full look at profitability for the year. We uh, then, of course, get a, an accrual adjusted gross farm income. And then as far as the expense side, uh, same thing transpires. So we see the cash operating expenses and then those uh, accrual adjustments or changes in inventories here are factored in. So we get then to net farm income from operations. And then, um, you know, we do have a, a small gain on a capital sale. So we get bottom line net farm income here. Then a few other measures and information here. So we can see earned net worth and market value net worth, a quick look at some production metrics for this operation. On the right-hand side then are um, a lot of the uh, ratios and measures that you expect to see. So we do follow farm financial standard guidelines throughout FinPAC. So you're gonna see um, those 21 recommended ratios and measures. Uh, so to start, we see the liquidity measures, solvency, profitability for this past year, our repayment and efficiency uh, ratios as well. So lots of, lots of details here um, that you can really dig into that financial performance of the business. And then lastly, of course, we want to know about accuracy and hoping that things are, are accurate so we do get a look at cash and liability discrepancy. Then just like with the balance sheet, as we dig into, um, into the following pages, we'll see a lot more information. So to start here, we'll get income statement information. So we can see that cash income for the year and then the impact of the inventory changes to get to that accrual adjusted income statement. Um, if you really wanna learn more about uh, the calculations here, page three is, is where you'd like to go. You can see we're directing you how to calculate some of those things. So if you're wondering how rate of return on assets is calculated, uh, you can see it's, it's line E divided by line F, for example. So um, just helps you as a, as a producer or as a consultant 
uh, work with those farms and uh, help them learn more about that financial information. Additionally, on this page, we'll get a statement of owner's equity and a statement of cash flows as well. So you can, again, uh, see all of the different financial statements for the past and then a more detailed look at the calculation of repayment capacity. Um, then a, a quick look at production metrics and, and really the power of this software comes into or the FinAN comes in when we start looking at these specific enterprises. Once you can get to that information with the producer, I know it, it takes a little bit more time and effort, but there's a lot of power in this when we can look at um, corn versus soybeans and how that performed in the operation for the year. So, for example, corn on owned and rented land here, uh, we can see that unfortunately our crops uh, weren't unnecessarily profitable in this year and we can see that our rented land um, had lower profits. So, uh, lets us see the profitability on a per enterprise, a per field if you want to get to that. And it also talks about or shows us the cost of production there as well. So if I'm still needing to market grain into the future, what um, for this last year's crop, what type of prices do I need? Uh, same here with the livestock enterprise. So on our beef cow calf, we can see um, returns based on 100 weight produced of animals per cow and then an enterprise total. So we can see uh, that profitability and, and understand that in, in different um, iterations there. So no matter the crop or livestock enterprise that you have, you can um, prepare an analysis like this. And like I said, value-added um, enterprises as well. If, if what you're doing in your operation doesn't quite fit this um, you know, traditional mold, well, there's a value-added that likely can help you get to the same, a similar analysis. Uh, also with our FinAN, I talked about history in our overview. So these graphs are, are really great. Once you do have that history, we can see the performance of this operation over time. And then we have FinBin. We're going to talk about FinBin in a couple weeks, I believe, but that's coming from our large farm financial database. So we can actually pull some peer benchmarking information directly into the software with that. So again, we'll talk about FinBin more in the future, but um, it is a nice peer benchmark in this situation. So all of the different ratios and measures are, um, are outlined here so we can see not only the trend, but get a quick look at a strong caution um, or vulnerable situations, what those may be. And then other historical information here includes that comparative balance sheet over time. Um, so we have both the cost and market balance sheet and then um, other trend information. So this is financial trends here to start. So our profitability, liquidity, all of our different types of measures here. Uh, and then on the second page, we get a, a quick look and it started on the other page, but um, a quick look at the trends of our different enterprises as well. So here we hadn't done as much detailed enterprise analysis work or maybe beef Production is new to this farming operation, but if you had that year over year, you would certainly see the different trends. So that's the past performance look within FinPAC. And then um, as we go forward, then you have the projection pieces. So the FinLERB um, here, very quickly, we have a few different um, um, scenarios that we have built in and you can see we've got um, you know, building that basic plan and a few different options. So when we do that, we're again, basing this on a typical year. And uh, here in our executive summary, in this case, we are getting a look at some of the key financial measures for these different scenarios and which may meet our um, needs best, or perhaps we're, we're not happy with um, this net worth change, which would likely be expected. So we may want to go back to the drawing board and, and think of some other things, but helps lay out that future planning need and, and what, um, you know, what options might best meet the needs of the farm. Um, with that, again, you're, you'll get a look at the income statement for your different alternatives, and then a look at the different um, detailed financial information. So a detailed look at profitability and repayment capacity here. So you can 
see the numbers involved. And then um, that continues here with, and then lastly, our solvency measures. So more of a high level basic look at different alternative planning. Cash flow planning on the other hand here, um, I'm just gonna do a monthly plan um, here to give you an idea. So we are looking at that specific production for the coming year. So again, what crops are we producing? Our beef cow calf operation, our corn and soybean sales and the expenses related to that. Uh, when we look at the output here, we then um, we're looking just at this coming year. So we're getting a look at net expected net cash flow, um, changes in working capital. You can see our peak operating loan need, which we can look at on the next pages. And then lastly, that projected income statement as we look down the left-hand side here. And with that leading to earned net worth change. Just like we saw in FinAM then, we have all of the um, financial ratios and measures on the right-hand side. So again, we can dig into the financial metrics here and, and learn more about um, this projected uh, year. As we look at the following pages then, um, here uh, we see the inflows on a monthly basis to start here of all of our different revenue sources. So we see some commodity sales and personal income, all of those things can be built in, as well as the expected expenses. So whether it's crop specific expenses, livestock specific expenses, or uh, general expenses for the farm, all of those different options are available. Uh, then as we move on to page two, uh, we add in our financing and our investing um, operations for the coming year. So we see capital purchases, new credit, and loan payments. So on a monthly basis, we're taking all of this information. So if we would have tracked January from start to finish, um, we see that we actually have a deficit this month of $65,000. So the power of the monthly projection is we can track that operating need throughout the year. So here we're borrowing automatically on our operating loan. Um, the same holds true for February. And then March, it looks like we sell some cattle, sell some crops. And so we're able to pay back on that operating loan. So it just helps us track um, expected operating performance. We see the line rest here for a bit of time, but we can also see that in February, we peak here. So, um, you know, it, it just helps us better plan for the coming year and what cash needs we might have or where we may need to make some adjustments. Uh, with that, of course, we get some more details related to production and that change in inventory again, just like we saw in Finan. And then lastly, like I said, we can get uh, the projected uh, financial statement. So here we see our beginning balance sheet with that projected ending balance sheet uh, based on this last year's scenario. Uh, other information, um, provide you with lots of information here, but how does this year's financial performance stack up to um, typical recommendations? So we can see, you know, if we just do a, a quick overview here, pretty strong liquidity in this operation. We can see that's uh, well into the green as well as solvency. And, and this, this year's projection uh, has some profitability challenges. So we may need to adjust with that or um, think more about that. And then lastly, we can compare this projection with uh, the previous historical information in this file. So we can just see if this year seems to be on par or different for some reason um, compared to historical years uh, within, the, uh, within the file. So probably a lot of information. Um, hopefully you can see some of the power of, of FinPAC here in your day-to-day uh, -day work as a producer or your work with producers in helping them um, better understand the finances of their operation. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and I am going to turn it over to Rachel. I, we um, have a two-pronged approach here talking about financial management today. So thank you. Thanks, Pauline. And I, Go ahead. I should say, if anybody has questions, certainly chat them in, or we can pause here for a second and just take them verbally. But um, I didn't see any other chat questions. So, Before we move on too far, I did want to mention that in this series, FinPAC is the only product that we are um, 
going to be demonstrating or the, that is not free. So FinPAC for producers is $149 for one year. Um, and you can contact us through our website if you're interested. Um, but just to reiterate, every other tool that we'll be covering in this series and have covered so far is available free of charge. So I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or chat at any point, um, or if you think of questions for Pauline. Um, but the other tool that we wanted to talk about today is called Interpreting Financial Statements and Measures. And so this is just an online course um, to help agriculturalists interpret and develop your financial statements. And so um, we will actually, we're actually about to launch um, a sibling site to this, which is developing your financial statements and measures, which um, I can give you a little beta test of. It's not live yet, but it will be in about a week or two. Um, and we're really excited to get this up. This just shows you how you, um, if you are a beginning at a beginning farmer, beginning first time doing your own books, those sorts of things, how you can make your balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, um, net worth, any of that. Um, and, and it will walk you through what that means and how to get there. Um, but the interpreting side, uh, it's available at um, ifsam.cfm.umn.edu, and I'll put it in the chat shortly. Um, but again, this is just, um, it's free for anyone to go access. Uh, it's available at that website. And if I just click in, one of the videos might start, but um, what we're doing in this, this series is that we're just walking through the balance sheets of um, what your balance sheet might look like, how to improve your balance sheet, how to value your assets, and really just walking through the basics of what you need to be doing um, to interpret where you're at in your operation. And so I would encourage you um, to take a look at this. This is used by a variety of people. We designed it for farmers and producers and agriculturalists. Um, but actually, we've had a number of um, agriculturally focused banks actually send their beginning lenders through it. So um, this is kind of the training grounds of what lenders might be looking at if you're looking at getting some fun funding or any of the farmers you might be mentoring are looking at that. Um, one of the sections that I really like is the ratios and measures section. And so that um, will go through like liquidity measures, solvency, profitability, what those mean and what, um, what goes into computing those ratios and how we're interpreting those. So I really would encourage you to take a look at this. And when I send out the recording today, I will also be including a link to this site. So um, if there are any other questions, it looks like um, I have a question. Do you have a list of what we need to tr keep track of in different farm operations for like livestock, vegetables, et cetera? Um, so with that, um, Pauline, feel free to chime in. But um, when you work with your accounting system, like we talked about earlier, I put a link in the chat. Um, Iowa State has an article on how to choose a system to help you keep track of farm records, including um, PC Mars, Quick and QuickBooks. There are some extension resources from, from around the country that have uh, helped set up charts of accounts with those other systems like QuickBooks and Quicken. And that would pro those charts of accounts would probably be a good place to start as far as what to keep track of for those records. I think your question, Rodrigo, dovetails into some probably of uh, the farm answers pieces we'll go over in a couple of weeks, although you're asking the question now. So um, certainly want to, we can um, maybe share some of that um, uh, offline here as well. But uh, my, I was starting to type an answer to you. Um, I think what Rachel offered, the chart of accounts that are, are in farm answers, for example, for um, uh, for different software solutions is a great idea. Or in general, I think just taking that Schedule F um, tax form, I know it may seem basic, but it does provide a lot of the, the information that you're needing to gather, not only for tax purposes, but then also your financial management. So 
uh, certainly commodity sales. Um, if there is other income sources, whether it's government payments or insurance payments, um, other farm income sources, and then those um, typical farm expenses, seed, chemical, fertilizer, um, purchased seed for livestock repairs, rental things. Uh, really, the, the Schedule F does hit a lot of those needs. Um, we'll use them slightly different in, in FinPAC and the analysis, but it does outline what you're typically looking for. So hopefully that um, makes sense. Great. Great. And if anyone has any other questions, feel free to unmute or put those in the chat. Um, otherwise, I will give you back a port the rest of your afternoon. And I hope you all have a great week. And we will see you next Wednesday at noon for our third session in this series.